What's up guys, welcome back to Viewer Castle. Today we're going to start off with Dextral. Castle level is a 24. So we'll jump into it on my archer. Be a little over leveled, but I'll try to take a look at exactly what he has. And I'll give some advice on it, even though the advice that I give will be kind of obsolete uh, in a couple of days. But I want to get everybody's castles done because then I can start on a, a fresh slate when, uh, when open creation comes. Alright, so a time waster, ca time waster group is good to have at the start of your castle, if you're going to use one. It seems like the entire, uh, the entire castle might be based around time wasting, which unfortunately won't really help you because I'm over leveled. So, you know. Um, but this will definitely be one of the things that won't really be in the game as much anymore, coming, uh, coming with open creation, because it only knocks off one star if you miss the timer. Alright, so now we have a little bit of DPS, although the trap archers are probably the least effective in my opinion. They used to be really good back when chaining hunger bots was a thing. Uh, because you could actually use it to kind of stun the person and keep them stunned for a little bit longer. But this is, in general, a good group. I might think about switching out the Hungerbot to Pinstrike. I think it's universally the best now um, in almost every situation. And especially with traps, because it kind of pushes you back into traps and it stuns you a little bit longer as well, I think. Wow, that is a lot of minions that I just killed. I actually... I, it was obviously a double pull. Um, I double pulled something, and I just kind of saw minions over here, so I volleyed it. And I'm not sure what came with what uh, group. But, like, it looks okay, looking at it. I mean, you have the stun and the damage with the Cyclopses, and then a bunch of uh, Stairmasters, which are good. So, in theory, it seems good. Scorpios are kind of good everywhere. I mean, it's hard to have a Scorpio that, like, it, it's pretty tanky. You could see there that it really didn't get to do damage to me, but that's only because I'm so high level, so I was able to kill it so much quicker. But, uh, they're so tanky they can usually do at least a little bit of damage, or, you know, I mean, they are dodgeable 100%, and I've gotten quite good at dodging Scorpios simply because uh, they used to be used all the time. A couple months ago, they were a little bit stronger than they are now, and people would just use make castles of pure Scorpios, uh, 100%, and getting through those meant you had to be able to dodge at least one, possibly um, up to like three Scorpios in a boss room. You'd have to be able to try to dodge them without taking damage, which wasn't easy. Alright, this seems fine. You got a little uh, Resurrecting Doctor Skull there. I think those are pretty good these days. Not sure how they're going to be in open creation because your skeletons will take extra trap damage, but then they'll just get resurrected again anyway, so I'm really not sure. Um, they also could be good with like a lot of jelly walls inside of a room with a bunch of skeletons like that. Maybe that would be good. I don't know, it's something you have to really try out and think about. And I mean, it's just really going to change the entire game. A lot of different things that you can do. I'm just not sure how many of them will be really good. Although I guess Jelly Walls would slow down your creatures as well, so it wouldn't really even make much of a difference, I don't think. I don't know. Something I'll have to try out. Alright, Pete Poundmore. You got a healer on him. Um, when I used to use Pete Poundmore, I used to use Enrage just because it does make their movement speed a little bit quicker as well. But with every archer pretty much using bear traps now, uh, I mean it really doesn't matter. Um, 
you're really focusing on your peat pound more to deal damage to knights rather than archers because they're just so easy to stun lock them as an archer. Um, so I think healing is fine. Especially if you use it anywhere else in your castle. Alright, so we've got three of them here. One of them over here. I think if I just get behind this uh, this mine, what I can do is I can headshot this one, hope that that crits and kills it, and then volley over this and see what happens. Because I'm not actually sure. It worked out pretty well. But if I was lower level, I think they would have all teleported out of the volley, and I would have had to finish them off. But that being said, I think the mine probably should move. Because that is a thing that I can do. And at least for a split second, they'll just kind of walk towards me because they can't get a shot. So it's one less shot that they're going to take towards the hero, basically. Alright. Thing about, like, seems like you had a bunch of minions from your Doctor Skill and your Puppeteer, and then you just wanted them to resurrect. The thing about resurrecting units in the boss room is it's such a big area to kind of play around in that the skeletons are so slow they won't really ever get close enough to deal their damage. Usually it's better in more confined spaces. Or like longer corridors where the Dr. Skull can get kind of over in one area and then you volley over to try to kill the Dr. Skull but by the time you deal some damage to it the skeletons have all moved over there and then you have to get back around them again and you take damage every time you kind of go through them so that's another thing that um, is a good area with Dr. Skulls. But uh, we'll jump into number two in just a second. Alright, next up we have Van the Man, castle levels of 15. I believe he was a beta key winner that I uh, gave away, I think. Um, I'll go through it really quickly, because level 15 doesn't have all that much available to them. And once open, open beta comes out, I'm probably going to put a limit on uh, the level in which I do viewer castles. It'll probably be either 18 or 20, somewhere in that range. And then I'll be able to have one player, one character on like 19, one on 24, and one on 30. So I can kind of do each level at least more closely to uh, the actual uh, difficulty of the castle. Tons of archers with uh, bear traps, which is a little annoying for knights to deal with actually. Generally bear traps aren't that great, but the one person who does have a little bit of trouble with them is, is knights. Um, that being said, you avoid them at least decently, and you won't take too much damage, because the archer himself does way less damage than if he was on a different specialization like Headshot. Alright. And, I mean, you can see, you know, traps are less effective. They don't have the third head on the rotating cannon trap and stuff like that, just at the lower levels. One, uh, one single mouse trap instead of a possibility of three. It's just a lot of the stuff is a lot weaker at the lower levels, because people are learning how to attack as well, so... It'll be interesting to see how easy the game is now that I know how to attack against castles, but then again, uh, when when the uh, open beta or whatever hits... Or I guess free creation, when, it, when the wipe hits, I guess is what I should say, um, everybody's going to be low level, so all the good players are going to be low level as well making good castles because they're able to, you know, do better castles because they know how to kind of attack in the game. So it's going to be kind of interesting. Should make for some fun attacking as people are trying to learn the game and stuff, though. I'm pretty excited about it. That seems like it's almost a bug. Um, if you guys no noticed... What basically happened is I would kick the Defendatron, which would take away the channel channeling on his shield, but he would still absorb damage like he was still shielded. I'm not sure if that's intended or what exactly. It's not really that annoying. I mean, it's not such a big exploit that people will use it nonstop or anything, so... But yeah, I could kick him away, and if his uh, shield was still on, which, I mean, I wasn't able to get to him in time, but if he would still be shielded, which I'm not sure how that's supposed to actually work. For most creatures, if you stun them, their attack or whatever they're doing kind of stops happening. You know, a Jimbo will stop swinging, a uh, Zeke will stop trying to shoot, and stuff like that. So it's interesting that the uh, Defendatron doesn't behave that way. Cyclopses can do reasonable damage on this ability now. 
It used to be that you wouldn't use it on that ability, but since the damage buff last month or whatever, uh, it's gotten a bit better. Quite a bit better, actually. They're still a little weak to bear trapping archers, and even Keltrop archers. We got for the boss room, Count Snottingham. I'm interested to see how they balance the bosses if they actually buff them up enough. Because the last couple buffs they've made to bosses have been like so jokingly small that it doesn't actually matter. Or they made their hit points so high that it was like the boss itself would take you a minute to get through or something. So I'm interested to see how they're going to buff everything. Especially with creatures being able to take trap damage, they're going to have to buff everything kind of substamp substantially to make up for that, I think. But then it wouldn't really make sense for them to even put that in. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll jump into number three in just a second. Alright, so next up we have best result. Castle level's 13, so I'm going to jump into it and go through it quickly again. Again, like I said, at these lower levels there's really not much you can do. Uh, the best thing you can do is get lucky and hope that someone starts your castle without any potions at all. Because that's the biggest thing that I've noticed on newer players, and I was even watching, like, um, as Mighty Quest kind of was doing uh, tours and stuff like that with little gaming conven conventions and stuff, they were doing some tournaments and stuff, so I tried watching some of these tournaments and seeing how these, you know, quote-unquote really good gamers and stuff would play, and I was watching these people, like, start castles when the idea of it was like if you die you lose a point or the other player gains a point or something like that um or i guess if you win a castle you gain a point and if you win a defense you gain a point and whoever had the most points would win at the end of the tournament or whatever and these people had never really played before they just kind of threw them into like a level 20 castle or whatever and see how they would do and a ton of people are just starting castle without, without any potions at all and i mean that's kind of where you get your attacks from or you get your kills from at the lower levels. It's it's not really difficult for someone to make it through a castle if you have four potions. I mean, you're going to be able to heal yourself to full four times. I'm going the wrong way. Um, but these people would start would start going through castles uh, without any potions at all, which is just kind of crazy. And I would see them like dying to Dr. Skull, or even uh, I think one died to Puppeteer Skeletons. He had like 30 of them on the screen way back at the starting point of where you like you would start uh, you know you start inside of a castle he had like 30 of them around him and he could kill them but there was three puppeteers on the outside just constantly resurrecting him and he couldn't get through them to actually get to the uh, puppeteers he didn't have like lashing flames or anything and he just sort of died to them because he didn't have any potions it's kind of funny they would do like six damage a hit and he would stand there just attacking them for an hour just to like die to them like it was kind of like this like these guys are doing hardly any damage to me and I'd, I'd be like trapped up in this corner and i have no potions and i'm just sitting here trying to cleave through them because i don't have anything to get to the dr skull except his damage was so low and i mean this is lower level than me so it was taking him like two or three shots to get through each skeleton and my axe specifically has a better cleave than uh than other weapons. It's it's the highest cleave in the game, that's why, I've, yeah, that's why I use it. So he was doing less AoE as well, and he was just sitting there getting pelted by them until he would die. It was really funny. I like this sort of thing. This sort of thing is what gets kills though. Like, if you're going to make a, de uh, a defense at the early levels, and you want to try to get free kills on people, it's against people who don't know yet that you have to dodge these projectiles. Like, in other games, at least at like lower difficulties and at casual levels like Diablo and stuff like that, these action RPGs, you don't really have to dodge the projectiles because they don't do that much damage to you. But in this game, that many projectiles can kill you in one shot. Like, the idea of... Some, most of these action RPGs isn't necessarily to kill you, it's to 
let you have fun and let you grind your way up to the top and get gear and stuff like that, whereas this game, the defender wants to kill you. I mean, that's his entire intention. And you have to kind of understand that before you become kind of decent at Mighty Quest. You have to get better at dodging all of these things and figuring out what the defender is actually trying to go for in order to kill you. Um, but yeah, that is number three. So we're going to end the video here. As always, if you guys enjoyed I do, please subscribe. I have a lot of um, cool stuff coming once Open Creation comes out and stuff like that. Go through all of my defense guides again uh, from the start to finish and all that good stuff. Um, we're not taking any more requests for viewer castles until a later date. Basically after uh, the progression reset and everybody starts to learn the game, myself included, so I can actually give advice and stuff like that. Um, but uh, probably later February, um, I'll start taking requests again and I'll be able to see all your crazy things that you guys come up with with open creation. So uh, that being said, we're going to end the video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.